now after entering into ips some will have a feel i should go and work with the cba raw ib different avenues because of they would have seen some movies or something in them say no is it right royally can we enter cba once we become ips officer after few years can we enter into raw cba or there are again certain exams or checkups before entering that sir. because all young aspirants will be seeing this video sir yeah because this is basically after joining the service once you are allotted to your cadre you work for about 5 years then you are you have the right to apply for deputation to any of these organizations you can apply for cba you can i play for ib you can apply for raw you can apply for even capf all is privileges that there so initial years is about 5 years where you have to work in your state and after that you can apply to the government of india for any of these posts which are uh, where the vacancies are available and you can be absorbed or you can be inducted in those posts then again you come back to your state for a cooling off once the cooling off is over if you are still interested in working in those organizations then apply again and go at a higher level as well so it's basically that there's no separate entrance exam or anything like that but you have to complete certain mandatory periods of years of service in your respective states once you're allotted to the cadre and after that it is a right or they will select only few for raw few for cba is there anything like that sir no it's not like that because it's it depends on the authority which is going to select you they will see your profile your capabilities your eligibilities they will see the criteria and the accepting agency will decide whether to take you or not it's not that they are distributed to cba ib or raw like that you can apply to all of them so whichever agency is interested in you they will choose you yes how you balance uh, work and family sir because generally ips means there is no family that we cannot give time always work 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 is it true or how to manage sir? how you are managing see in the early years it's very tough because the early years of your service were managing family life and uh, i uh, 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 think uh, professional life was very tough for me because uh, i was in quite difficult places initially the life was very busy the two years in coimbatore was a very hectic tenure because there almost i would say that we worked 24 hours every day for nearly 2 3 years like that so that's uh, was quite tough because i i don't think that i i think most of my shops in shoppings in coimbatore i've done, done with my uniform on i would have never taken my family in plain clothes i, I remember going to restaurants in uniform with my family for food so that was a kind of life we we had initially but as you grow up in the hierarchy as you grow up in the system then there is the once you have a proper institutional structure where your teams are taking good care you will certainly have good amount of time to spend with your time the children are growing up because as police officers it's very important that we need to spend time with our children because when we many complain with many police children is that my father did not spend time with me my mom did not spend time with me this is a big complaint as far as police families are concerned but i would say that as we grow up and when we have certain jobs where we can take care of the families we must take care of the families and be with them because otherwise suddenly you find after 20 years 25 what have i done i've been doing only job i've been putting on uniform running around doing this job this job from morning till night but my family feels neglected that such a situation should never arise initial years first 10 years it's really tough 10 years especially when you are on the field doing the job of an sp running around handling issues on ground it's going to be very tough i always tell my juniors who ever joins first 10 years slog yourself once you have done that the remaining years of your service you will know what to do what not to do how to handle things that kind of maturity would have probably you would have got it by 10 years of service so that's my i think uh, approach as far as this issue is concerned and similarly the same case with me as well after 10 years of service i was able to focus a bit on my family and they take good care of them as well yes. sir if many who are seeing this uh, session will be also women aspirants lady aspirants for them also whether it is uh, equally challenging like male officers or for them it is it is more challenging to be in police department see i think it will be more challenging for them because they have to take care of the family as well because they got of responsibilities at homes on the field the challenges are equal whatever challenges i have my fellow lady officer will also have the same challenges so there's no discrimination as far as these issues are concerned because today i just come, come back from madurai as commissioner of police most of the stations are run by the women inspectors so they do the same job as a male inspector what he does so similarly in ips as well 
whatever your male colleague does the la- the lady officers will also have that similar same challenges so there's no bar on that but as far as the home front is concerned i feel the lady officers will have a bigger challenge than the man yes. sir someone watching this session they want they have a dilemma whether to put ias as first choice or ips first choice what will be your advice on what basis definitely both yes boldness is required both uh, honesty is required but something extra is required for that cocky if you feel they, how they can gauge themselves sir okay for cocky i think you have to have that feeling inside you have to feel inside okay this is some job which i really want to do for the rest of my life that that passion has to be there because that that deep passion has to come this is something i can really do well this is what i want and this normally is because a lot of times we get attracted because of what they show us in movies that's what happens to many youngsters but that should not be the approach i won't i won't advocate such things because police is not what you see in movies police is something which is uh, beyond all that it is much more holistic it is much more different because it is a department which ensures public order and social order so it requires a lot more other characters so i would say that the individual has to decide whether i am actually cut out whether i am suitable to public relations is very important because at least in the ias what happens after certain years of service you go back to secretariat you are become a secretary and all that your interaction with the public may not be that high whereas for a, for a police officer at the district sp or as a dig of a range or an ig of a zone or as a commissioner of police their interaction with public public bodies and people are very 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 high so if you look at a career of constantly being mixing with the people talking with the people engaging in community work engaging in social work engaging in some kind of public order and social order work i think police will be a good choice but if you think that your job is more to do with policy vision and all that on different different departments different different issues ias may be a very great job police also requires visionary because today the police that we have was from the 1861 act and now how we evolve what kind of new visions we have new technology that can come into the policing what kind of reforms we require what kind of administrative structures can be done in policing that also has that also requires certain visionary requirements but in the ias the opportunities to serve in different departments are there whereas in police it's confined to policing confined to investigation confined to intelligence confined to internal security whereas the ias it's so multifarious so many departments you have so many departments that you can head at some point of time so for police if you feel that you are a specialist in policing you can handle law and order social order public order all that i think you should choose police as your service thank you sir now someone who as an outsider in the general civil service circle the talk is ips and indian railway traffic service these two services are very tough because of superiors every day you have to hear verbal abuse whereas when compared to other services ias irs and all generally friendly and even if they don't like they'll show it in asia but here every day you have to get some firing from the seniors is it true sir so it's not the firing it's the pressure i would say that more to do with the time limits because these two services they do a lot of fire fighting because if you mishandle a situation at a particular moment at a particular time that can explode into a bigger situation so that's why there's a lot of pressure to complete or solve the issue as early as possible say for example a riot is about to begin i cannot wait i need to act so naturally my boss or my superior over sitting above me will be putting what are you doing what are you doing how will you solve this so such kind of challenges and phone calls will keep on be addressed to you because there's pressure to ensure that it doesn't explode into a bigger situation because the nature of job done by these two departments i think it requires certain amount of pressure because uh, i cannot sit quiet okay something is happening there okay somebody will handle it but i need to find out and follow up and both these services require very constant follow up and when there is a follow up there will be a lot of pressure from the seniors they will be asking you repeatedly have you done this have you done this have you done this sop has this been done and there's lot of emergencies 
and both these services deal with a lot of emergencies, operational emergencies. Like if there's an accident, if there's a roadblock, if there's an agitation, if there's a protest. Similarly, in traffic, railway traffic services, there's a lot of you know, these uh, operations of train movement and all that. We have so many issues. So such challenges require 24 by 7 attendance. Your phone can ring at any time. Anybody can bother you. Anybody can call you. And you can be woken up in the middle of the night to attend to a situation. That's why it's a kind of a little, some people may feel it's a little nagging. It's getting, you know, people are putting a lot of pressure on me, a lot of, you know. But that's the nature of the job. We need to accept it. And somebody has to do this job. And that's, and one good thing about these two services in retrospection, say, for example, if I retire, and when I retire and I sit back and think, I would have loads of memories. These loads of memories will not come to most of the services because these two are operational in nature. You're there on ground. When I have, when I, when I think about my memoirs, I'll have such a beautiful anecdotes to relate to my grandchildren or great grandchildren or anybody at some point of time later in life. Yes. Yes, sir. Now being, yes, it is a stressful job. As you said, how is there any extra thing you do, sir? Like, meditation, yoga, prayer, something as a police officer, how they maintain, because all are humans, how they are able to maintain a cool approach despite so much stress. See, because uh, I think in, at least in Tamil Nadu police, at least we've introduced this police well-being program. So there's been a very successful program, which, which we did for about almost a year. All the police personnel have been covered because we have given them certain training, structured training has been given to, to them, basically to deal with their own police occupational stress and also the stress they experience at homes. So this has really helped them. Personally, I'm a sportsman. So if I get a chance, I'll play volleyball for some time. If I get a chance, I'll go play shuttle for some time or I'll dribble some basketball for some time. So these are the things that gives me a lot of pleasure in the sense that, okay, I can ease myself, relax myself for about half an hour or 45 minutes or even one hour. I'm very happy because uh, before I came back to this, okay, came to this post, after almost 25 years, I started playing volleyball in Madurai. That connected me. And then I realized how sports can ease so much of stress in your life. Because I loved it so much, play for one hour a day, sometimes play both in the mornings and in the evenings. I realized that whatever worries, whatever tension, whatever stress you have is completely lost. It's not there in your mind. Because you're cool. That the because you you tire yourself in the sports field, you completely exhaust yourself, you play, and I would say that your entire hormonal level changes. There's a lot of changes happening in your body, you can realize, because what I was before playing, and what I am after playing, there's a very visible difference. So I would recommend sports is one thing for any stressful job that people should take up, or some people say that they are successful doing yoga, meditation, and all that, which I have tried, but I have not been able to continue or some good walk or jogging or cycling. These are all some of the things I'm sure that people will be able to handle stress very well. Sir, thank you. And my last question for this session, sir. According to you, what do you understand by leadership in policing or police department? See, police leadership is certainly different from other kinds of leadership because it requires a sense of command and control. That's what I would give it as a priority because you have a large force. You have a lot of do's and don'ts. There are certain standard protocols and procedures. And it involves dealing with people. So if the leader does not have a proper command, and if he doesn't have a proper control over his force, then there can be a reckless behavior or there can be a lot of indisciplinary acts. So as a police leader, I would expect people to have excellent command and control in themselves first. And also over the subordinates, the good control is very essential. The next point is, in a force like this, you have to be a welfare-oriented officer. That's very important in police department because you lead a large force, a force that is working 24 by 7, a force that sacrifices its family time and also a lot of social time. They don't celebrate festivals. They don't, they don't have time to celebrate festivals. They, they don't get time to be with their families for marriages or anniversaries, a lot of other family functions. In such a force, their welfare issues have to be taken care of very, very, very well. Because once the subordinate knows that my leader takes care of my welfare, he'll be willing to take care of his duties extremely well. He'll be able to willing to sacrifice his time hours, be willing to be sacrificed extra little extra hours of work, 
all that will be able to willing to sacrifice sleep everything will be, will be willing to sacrifice so as a leader one has to lead from the front if there is an emergency if i sit at home and ask my subordinates to work on the field then i am not a leader if there's an emergency i should also be part of them i should also work along with them and be part of them then i am a leader similarly if there is a crisis i should be there along with them i should not say that do that do this sitting at my office i have to be because when they are not able to handle it when i feel that they are not equipped to handle it it's my responsibility to be there along with them and help them do it the way that should be done that's what leadership is all about similarly a leader in police has to be a little magnanimous as well he cannot be strict always you have to be a little more magnanimous and a little more empathetic because empathy is very much essential because a lot of police personnel today would have family problems they would have a lot of service problems they would have had their own personal issues so when they have such issues we need to be a little empathetic listen to them hear the grievances ease ease them put them in some kind of comfort and try to solve those small small little, little problems wherever we can intervene and solve them once we do that the force will stand behind you and will be able to take your commands and orders to execute them on ground thank you so much sir for uh, giving a complete picture about the indian police service and i know you are so busy person despite your busy schedule you uh, immediately gave us time thank you so much on behalf of all the aspirants who are watching across india sir thank, thank you, you sir. sir thank you so much thank you thank you yeah thank, thank you sir thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you.